everybody, how's it going? So, we're looking into another manipulation uh, video here with observables, and this is the second one on stream manipulation. And in the first video, we saw about 15 or 16 methods that we um, looked at. Well, we'll probably add about the same number here for this video, but we'll probably just need one more video, I think, after this one to get through ma most of the major methods that we'll be covering for observables. So let's get started. What I've done is I've created yet another project, which I have the git clone in the description of this video. And it's very similar to the previous video. We've got all our imports already here. We've got a whole bunch of um, flags to determine whether we're gonna show certain examples and the result of every example. So this is the same as the previous video. So I'm gonna come down to the ng on it and we're gonna start looking at some of these. So the first one that I wanna look at in this video is the every function. And what this essentially does is it looks at whatever the uh, stream is coming in and applies some kind of predicate Boolean function against it. So for example, I've got a stream here of numbers one through to six. This every function will go, is there any number uh, in this function that is less than five? Well, not any, are they all less than five, sorry? And the answer is no. We have one that's five and one that's six. So the result of the every function, because not everything passed this um, Boolean equation or this Boolean um, predicate, the result that comes out of here will in fact be false. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at that. So we come over and you can see the every method is returned false. Okay, if I take away the last two numbers here, so I cut them away, save, come back, now it passes as true. So basically every method is just to check a condition to see if all entries inside of a stream pass a certain predicate. Okay, that's essentially all it is. So I'm gonna quickly go back and comment that out. So we'll move on to the next one, which is exhaust. Now exhaust is a very interesting one. What it basically does is you have an upper observable where you're observing some kind of action. In this case, it happens to be a click event. And then after I've done that, I've done what's called a map and I'll explain more of this in a little bit later in this video. But we're mapping to a timer and the timer is basically after four se or every second it's returning a number and it does it for four seconds, okay? That's essentially what this take is. I'll, I'll be explaining take in probably the next video. So the how this works is that while this timer is continuing to count up to four, this original click event handler, or this observable here, will not do anything. It won't um, take any more stream events in until this internal, or what they refer to as a higher order observable has completed. Once the higher order um, observable is completed, then you'll be able to sniff for document events again, or click events again, to which it will then go through and do this over and over and over. And that's basically what this exhaust method does. It ensures that these will hold off on any events until the inner or the higher ordered observable has completed its task. So it's exhausting. You're exhausting the higher order observable before you start coming back to look for more, okay? That's essentially how it basically works. So let's come back over. So I haven't clicked anything yet, so nothing's actually happened. When I click, you get zero, one, two, three, and then if I click again, you'll get the same action. So you're like, okay, what's going on here? This is what happens. If I click and then I keep on clicking for four seconds, and I let go now before it finishes, you notice that nothing happens. It doesn't continue to go zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, because I clicked it so many times. It literally says all those clicks you just did were pointless because the action that will take in place of counting from zero to three hadn't finished yet. Now it's finished, it will register it. And then I can keep clicking and nothing will happen. And then see, nothing happens, I click again and it will continue on. So that's kind of what exhaust is used for. It's to basically prevent you from 
creating a huge stream of information when you haven't completed the previous stream. So, we'll put that one back now. Next one, expand. This is another interesting one. So what it essentially does, it's kind of like a, it's, a, it's like an aggregate function, I guess, where it aggregates your original stream and basically continues to add to it. So for example, the thing I've got here, I've got a yet another click event. Then I have this function called map to one. This map to I'll mention in a minute, but basically all it does is emit one so you're a stream with a bunch of ones in it and then this expand function gets hit all right what this expand function takes is it takes the original stream value here which is one it comes in it goes oh okay give me a stream of the value of you know x times two which happens to be two wait one second and then add it to the stream then once again the new value coming in will be two so it goes through and it repeats so it's now two times two which is four waits a second and then emits it then comes in now it's four and two times four is eight continues on and what i've done here at the moment is i've just grabbed the first 10. so what you're going to see on this is we're expanding the original concept of the clicks and when we click it's going to go one two four eight sixteen blah 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 every second okay and until it's done it 10 times and i believe the last number is 512. so let's just have a quick look at that so over here, I'm going to click now to get this started. We got 1, 2, 4, 8, there you go, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and then obviously the last one is 512. Okay, hopefully you understand what I meant by expanding there and aggregating numbers together and basically, you know, creating new numbers. So that's that one. Next one you're going to use very regularly, I would say, um, probably more regularly than most of the other things you'll use in observables, and that's the filter call. Uh, basically, it is what you think it would be. I have an observable of one to six here, so I count from one to six, and basically I'm filtering based on you know if it's divisible by two or not. So by by rights, we should get two, four, and six emitted after this filter function, and then I'm just spitting that out, okay? Very simple filter function. You just add a predicate, and it will filter out any values in the stream that don't match that. So we get over here, and as you can see, two, four, six. Now, if people don't know this yet, and I haven't actually gotten to this point, in the original Angular JS, we used to have the concept of a, a filter um, method. It wasn't called a pipe, it was called something else, I can't remember what it was called. Um, filter function or something like that. But it used the pipe construct. Now we haven't looked at pipes yet, but in Angular 2 they've taken out the ability to filter using pipes. So the other way you can do it is to create an observable and filter it before you return it back to the component. That's how they're kind of recommending it if you don't filter on the server, which it's always recommended to filter your information on the server if you can. So let's show filter. Next one is show find. So this one is very interesting. What it does is it will find the first value it can find starting from the, the start of the stream to see what would match the predicate that you've got in here. For me, I'm finding the first number in this set where it's divisible evenly by two. So the value should be returned here is two, okay? So let's check that. And you can see the value is two. So it actually returns the stream value. It doesn't return an index or anything like that. So that's fine. The next one does return an index because it's telling you what index number two is at. You know, so you may want to know what the index is of based on some predicate information. So this one should give us a one because it's in position number one. Remember, that this is like an array, so that's position zero. This is position one. So as a result, it returns one. Cool. That's that one. Save. Uh, the first function. Now, the first function is quite interesting as well. 
the easiest way of writing it is it looks for the first one in the list in the stream. If you don't specify any arguments, it'll just grab the first one inside of the observable, which in this case will be one. So and you can see the first method, no predicate, the number is one. For the next one, this is also using the first method. However, I've specified a predicate again. So it's now looking for the first one in the stream, which is easily divisible by two, which should be also two in this case. And you can see it is two. Okay. Next one. Now, ignore elements is an interesting one. I'm assuming this is something you might want to do if you don't want to return a stream of some sort. Kind of like the empty. I don't know if anyone remembers the empty uh, function. This one's ignore elements. The difference between empty and ignore elements is that there is a complete and an error that's returned on um, ignore elements. Now, I don't know why it's returning an error considering it doesn't really have an error. I think the thing is that if you happen to get an error before you call ignore elements, it will still allow that error to flow through, whereas the subscription or the value will never be returned. So you can see here, I'm trying to get the value, but because I've called ignore elements, no matter what's in here, um, it's never gonna actually print any of these out it's gonna print out complete successfully instead. Now I haven't spe specified an error here. I probably should have for the example, but you guys can play around with that and check it out for yourself. And as you can see, it just says complete successfully and nothing else was emitted. Next one, just a straight up Boolean one here is empty. So it's just checking to see if a particular observable has any stream data in it which for this case, we do have some stream data. So it's gonna return the value of true here. And as you can see, uh, sorry, it's not empty, sorry. So it will return the value of false. But if I come back over and I delete these out and save, it should return the value of true and it does. Okay, so it's just a matter of checking to see if there's anything to process and you might have that for a particular reason. You say, you might say if it's, not empty or if it's empty show something otherwise process the stream you know you may have that logic somewhere in your code you know from a component point of view so that's a place you can use that uh, so there's a last function which is basically the same as the first function that we saw above the difference between the two is obviously you're looking for the last instance of something rather than the first instance so for this last method, we return the value of seven because the original list here had the last value as seven, okay? And then you can do the same thing with a predicate. So for this example, I'm still using the is divisible by two, but it's the last one. So as a result, the last one is divisible by two is a six. So if I save this, we should get the value of six. And you can see the value of six here. Next one, map. Now map you've seen a lot, so now I'll explain this properly. Basically what map is, is it looks at the original value of a stream, you know, whether it be some click event or a number collection like this, and you can basically rechange the value based on the input. So what I've done here is for the first stream value, which happens to be one, I multiply that by 10, so the stream that comes out will have a starting value of 10 when I subscribe to it. The second value will have 20, third value 30, 40, all the way up to 70, all right? And that's what we'll be printing out here. So map is just literally mapping what was in the previous stream to a set of new values that makes up a new stream. Let's check that out. You can see it goes from 10 through 70. I mean, most of these are pretty straightforward. I mean, it's nothing um, surprising here. If you've been programming for a while, all these should make sense. Map2 is an interesting one. It just allows you to bind anything to a fixed number. So what's gonna happen here is I've got a click event and I'm going, whatever I do, whenever I click something, 
emit a value of three for that click event, okay? And then all I'm doing after that is displaying the three on the screen. So every time I click, there's going to be a new three shown. So there's three, 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 three. Now, this is usually pretty cool if you want to specify some kind of a constant related to a click. As I said, one of the earlier ones I did up here, uh, where is it? This observable here with the show expand, I mapped it to one. All right, so that was the starting point. And then I was expanding off of the one and creating like a, you know, a situation where I'm counting by a power of two. Starting at one, as soon as I clicked, it mapped immediately to one so we could start the whole loop going. So that's map two. Next one. Uh, max so max is a pretty powerful one too um, as you would expect it checks out the max of a bunch of numbers you know, in a collection here so you expect that the output of this will be 107 because it's the highest number and so we come over and you can see the highest number is 107 that's, that's the first um, overload for max the next overload is a little bit more complicated but I will explain how it works. So what I've got here is I've got a bunch of objects inside of an old method. I've got myself with an age of 26. Now, I'm actually a little bit older than 26, but I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Um, I'm not old old, okay? So don't sit there and, and tell me, oh, you must be like 50. No, I'm not 50, okay? I'm not even 40. Uh, I may not even be 30, <laughs> but, you know, I'm not, I'm not 26. So, um, then I've got Michael. This happens to be Michael Jordan. He just turned 54 the other day. I think Kobe is about 38. Kobe Bryant, that is. And basically, what I'm checking is to find out who's the oldest between the three of us, okay? So, how it's done is I go max. I pass in the type of object that I'm going to be comparing against. Now, I haven't written a class for this object, so I'm not going to specify what that is. If I use any, I can call dot something on it anyway. Like if you understand TypeScript, you'd know this. Any is like object, you know, or uh, yeah, it's like object in JavaScript. You know, you can, you can call anything on an object. It's like making it loose. You shouldn't really do this in practice. You should really have a player uh, class, but I'm just being lazy for this example. So and then what you do is you have two players that are compared to each other. So what will happen is Daryl will get compared to Michael first and then basically whoever returns the highest value inside of this function here will be deemed older right, than the other one as opposed to, I'll just close them, <laughs> as opposed to the other one. So what happens is my age is 26, I am not greater than 54, right? So therefore, I am younger, so I return a negative. So that instantly makes Michael older than me. So he gets the nod in terms of being the max person. And then what happens is Michael will get compared to Kobe. So it would be Michael and Kobe. And in this case, Michael's age happens to be older than Kobe's. So he'll get a value of 1. Kobe will get a value of negative 1. And then finally, just to get the right order... You know, Kobe will be compared against me, and they'll find that Kobe's older. He will be returned with a one, right? But the ultimate thing is, once all that all that values have been calculated against each person, the maximum value will come out, and that will be 54. Which, in case down here, when I subscribe, I'm pulling out the object that has the max value, which happens to be that object, and so I'm grabbing the name, which will be Michael. Okay. Sounds a little complicated. If you don't understand, please um, get in touch with me and I'll explain more. So let's have a look at this. Michael should be printed out on the screen. And there he is. Okay. Next one. Next one is um, very similar to the one we did with observable uh, state methods, the merge. Uh, if, if you guys remember, we had observable.merge. And we're merging, you know, basically one observable with another. Same deal here. The only difference is, is that the observable is already created ahead of time. So we've got a timer here that takes in 10 numbers, right, every second. 
So it's like one, then two, then three, or it's zero, sorry. Zero, then one, then two, then three, all the way up to nine. And then every two seconds, we're spinning out another zero to, to five of zero, then one, then two. So what's gonna end up happening when we merge the two together is we'll get zero, then we'll get one and zero, and then we'll get two, and then we'll get three and one, and then four, and so on and so forth. You'll see how it comes out because we merge the results together and put it into the one stream. So let's have a look at that. So we'll come over here, we'll reload, we got zero, then we all of a sudden two streams hit at the same time, then three, one, then four, then five, two, then six, then seven, three, then eight, then nine, four, and then finally a five will come on the end here. Hopefully that makes sense to you as well. Some of these things can be a little bit complicated, some of them are really, really easy. This depends on how your mind thinks. Next one, well, min shows, so this is the min function. Uh, this is the exact opposite of max, so I shouldn't have to explain too much here. It's literally the same example as above. The only difference is I've added a negative seven in this list here. But in terms of the data here for the players, I've done, you know, basically the same data and I've called min this time, which means that I should be returned. If you think of it in mids and max, and this one, negative seven should be returned. So let's just check them out. Open them up together. So negative seven and me. Yeah. And all this is in the GitHub repo, so you can just look at this for yourself if you're uncertain on what's going on. And very last, we've got one called partition. And this is this is actually quite handy if you ever want to do something in parallel. Just say you get a stream of data that's coming in at once, it might be it has 50 things, all right? and you want to process them in parallel, You what you can do is partition them off into two separate streams and you can process them differently or you know, at the same time essentially. So what I'm doing here is I have a timer, or yeah, kind of like a timer that's running every second up to 20 seconds, okay? And basically for each value in the stream that comes out, we're partitioning it off into two different streams. So, for the first value of zero, we'll go zero um, partition two, which is zero. So that will go in the first partition. All right, so that'll be partition zero. So zero will go in here. Next value of one will come in. It'll be one uh, modulus two, which will return one. That will go in this one. And then two will go in this one. And then three will go on this one. And four and five and so on and so forth. And then down here, I've subscribed to each partition separately, and I've spit out the results of each partition onto the screen, okay? So this would be good if you wanted to split out some, you know, some stream of data and process them in parallel, you know, and maybe you want to, you know, send one to one place and one to another, you know, I don't know. I don't know what your problem domain would be, but that's kind of what the trying to solve here. So let's have a look at this. And I'll refresh because it's already started. So partition one's got zero, partition two is one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You'll see all the way up to nineteen because remember we start with zero. So you can see it's basically spits them up. And the, the cool thing about it too is that we can continue to partition this if, off even more. We could make it modulus three, right? Now what would happen is we can create a third partition in here. So in fact, I'm gonna do this because this is actually a shorter video. So let's, let's do this just to prove my point. So I've created a third partition here and then we'll create another set of information here. Partition three results. And I'll go up and I'll create that. Partition three. Like so. And we'll come in down into the bottom of this file. 
I'm gonna add another paragraph. And we'll say three, partition three result, and partition three result. So now we should see them go across three different partitions rather than just two. So now it'll go zero and one, one in the next, two in the next one, then back up to three in the next, then four, then five, and so on and so forth. So let's have a look at that. So refresh. So we get zero, one, oh, what happened there? One, two. Okay, one sec. That's not quite working the way I expected, and I think I know why. Because, no, wait a second. That should have been fine. Oh, wait a minute. No, it only ever part it only ever goes into two separate partitions. That's my problem. So it looks like. Honestly, I thought, yeah, it only ever grabs two partitions. I'm surprised that didn't break then. Anyway, all right, forget what the last thing I just said. I was obviously wrong. I thought it would continue to partition, partition down. It doesn't, so that's a bit disappointing. But never mind. I honestly thought that's what we would do. I'll delete all this. I don't need it anymore. And that's all I wanted to show in this video. Uh, basically, there will be one more video on this to do with some extra methods I've left out. Like I want to explain, uh, where is it? The take method a little bit more, wherever it is. Uh, it's somewhere in this, in this file. Basically, there's a take method and there's a whole bunch of other methods I haven't uh, mentioned yet that would be quite handy for you guys to know. But I'll leave that for the next video. So until then guys, I'll catch you later. Bye for now.